Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're looking at how to start a new colony after the launch upgrade in Oxygen Not Included. Your first choice when starting a new colony would be to select a playstyle, of course. Uh, you have the option for survival mode or no sweat. No sweat just makes the game a little bit easier, so you can cope with issues that you might run into a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, I generally play in survival mode, which is the standard form of the game. Once you've chosen your playstyle, you'll need to choose the asteroid that you intend to start your colony on. Now, there are varying degrees of difficulty for the different types of asteroids. Uh, for the purpose of this guide, I'm going to be focusing on the uh, the asteroids that start with the temperate zone as the, the, the biome in the original area. It has things like copper and dirt and sandstone and sand and that sort, sort of thing. Algae is present. Uh, but there are plenty of different choices in here. And you can see that as you select each different asteroid, they, they also have a few different options for... Uh, the specifics of that asteroid. So, for example, this one has uh, is geoactive, so it has more geysers and vents. It has magma channels, medium-sized boulders. The pod location won't start in the very center of the map. And you can randomize these to try to get some different options. We're going to start initially here just with the basic Terra asteroid. Uh, for those of you who are new to start the game, this is probably the place you should begin because this is probably going to be the easiest uh, the easiest uh, asteroid to learn the uh, the game mechanics with. Once you've selected an asteroid, of course, you'll have to select your three starting duplicates. Now, the nice thing at the very beginning is you get to choose specifically what skills you want them to be. So you can choose their profession here, which will give you an idea of what they want to focus on. It defines their interests, and those are the things that they'll learn most readily. And then as they advance in their skill levels, will require less morale in order to manage it. So they get plus one morale when learning, when learning research skills, for example. Uh, this one will get plus one morale for building and for decorating. Uh, and then uh, researching and farming for these uh, traits on this particular duplicate. It's probably not a bad idea to have more than one interest on the duplicates that you're selecting. Uh, you can go if you get only a single interest, you can get a really high score. But if you get more than one, they can get a morale benefit from doing a variety of different things, which can certainly be helpful. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I don't think the character selection at the beginning has that big of an impact on your colony. Although um, certainly some other people may uh, may think differently. Uh, however. When I select my duplicates, I like to make sure I have one that's going to be focused on researching, uh, one that can do decorating and building ideally, and then one that will have like farming and research because we're going to need a second researcher ultimately anyway. Some of these particular skills, uh, I think it's important to make sure you select them early on, only because you're getting the luck of the draw and the duplicates are going to come later on. And if you're waiting on someone else to help you with research to make that go quickly, or you're waiting on someone else to be able to do uh, farming skills or that sort of thing, um, you, you might have to go through several different cycles waiting for those to show up, whereas things like building and digging uh, and whatnot, all the duplicates can do anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. The other thing I pay attention to is what their negative traits are, so um, Biohazardous is not that big a deal, Yokel, not, not many of these I think have that huge of an impact on your game outcome. The one I tend to avoid personally is Flatulence because they're going to release natural gas all over your colony, which can interrupt things like farming as you get low concentrations of gas, messing with your with your plant growth and what have you. I just find it a nuisance, so it's one that I don't generally take. But whatever you choose to want to have for your colony in here is fine. At the start of the game, you're going to have a supply of oxygen already because there'll be a little bit of oxalite in your starting area, so you don't have to worry about your duplicates breathing just yet. Later on, we'll need to solve for oxygen needs for all the duplicates that are running around as they use up the air that's available. Uh, but initially, you don't have to worry about that too much. Similarly, you don't have to worry about food right away because you do have 16,000 kilocalories worth of food stored. Each duplicate will consume about 1,000 kilocalories per day. So with uh, with our three duplicates, we have at least five days worth of food already stored up. And as we dig around through the, the different areas in the colony, you'll see these cracked spots in the in the ground. And those can contain like things like food and seeds and what have you as well. Uh, so they might find some muckroot hiding in here that they can eat also. It's a good idea to take stock of your surrounding environment right at the very beginning of the game so you can kind of understand where things are. Uh, we're starting in a temperate biome, so you can see the temperatures in here are ideal. They're right in that temperate range. Um, it's great for growing things. Nothing is too hot. Nothing's too cold. Depending on the asteroid you start with, uh, this can be very different. Sometimes uh, there are some asteroids like the Iridio asteroid where everything in here is hot initially and it's actually too warm to be able to grow crops. Or you can get uh, frozen asteroids as well, where things are super cold. Uh, but we're starting off with, a, with an easy one, uh, so we don't have to worry about that too much. You can see there are some warmer areas surrounding this temperate zone. This middle area in the, in the beginning of your colony is going to have things like sandstone, dirt, uh, coal. There's going to be some algae in here, which you can use for creating oxygen. There's copper in here, which you'll need for making machinery. Uh, there are some plants in here that uh, you can use for decorative purposes or for growing food. And you'll find more seeds and things for those as well. And of course you have uh, pockets of water, which will be really, really important for research, uh, as well as for things like uh, uh, plumbing and bathrooms and all those sort of thing. 
To start off, you're going to want to try and get a place right as soon as you can to create a bathroom because your duplicates are going to need to go pee pretty soon after they get in here. So we're going to dig a spot out to, to the side. Uh, this digging will also produce uh, some resources for us that we can use for other things. Uh, sandstone to build floor tiles and that sort of thing, ladders and what have you. We're also going to want to get access to this water pretty quickly because with the bathrooms, the duplicates are going to be creating food poisoning germs. And if they're eating those, they can get sick. And sick duplicates don't work as quickly, and, you know, there is a potential risk of death in your duplicates, though it's not really a huge risk um, with the way that things are, are tuned right now in the game. But it's probably still a good, re good idea to make sure you stay clean. Uh, so we're going to try and get access to the water early on as well. As we've dug our way to the side, we are gathering up materials that we can use to build with. So we're going to put down some tiles early on. This will give our duplicates something they can run on as they have a, an actual proper floor. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave a gap here somewhere that their duplicates can go down in order to... Uh, build a ladder downwards as well. So we'll just leave a, a gap here. I like to use a three tile gap myself. It's not required, uh, but I just find that it helps with, uh, with with gases moving around if I leave a, a lot of space where I'm building ladders. We're already halfway through the first cycle and our duplicates are gonna need to use the washroom soon. By cycle two, they generally need to pee and if you don't have a place for them to go, they're just gonna go right on your floor. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and build a couple of, uh, a couple of outhouses here for the duplicates to use. We're also going to want to build a couple of sinks, or the wash basin rather, for the duplicates to wash their hands after they use the bathroom. Uh, because we don't want them getting food poisoning germs that they're going to spread around the colony. Once your sinks are built, it's a good idea to set the direction that you want them to use the sink. So, it starts off initially using it both ways. So if they pass by the sink and they have any germs on them, they'll use the sink. Uh, I generally like to preserve water a little bit, so I'm going to actually just set it up so direction left. So what'll happen is after they've used the outhouse when they're running past the sinks this way, they'll wash their hands, but they won't wash their hands on the way in. I plan to gather all my water toward the lower part of my colony. Uh, some people like to keep it in different areas because the, uh, like up high, because the duplicates have a tendency to potentially pee in your water, which adds germs. Uh, my preference is to keep it down low just because it's sort of out of the way. It allows for easy gas movement, and I like to expand my colony generally upwards more so than downward. Um, now look at the placement where this colony is. Uh, we might need to expand a little bit downward anyway, uh, just to be able to have enough space to build, because the, the next biome is actually relatively close up here. And you can see that it is a little bit warmer up here. We don't want to get uh, into the, too many of those, those high temperature areas. It's now break time. The duplicates are taking the chance to eat. Uh, they're going to go to sleep and what have you. You can alter their schedule if you click on the schedule tab here. You can see they're in downtime at the moment, and they're about to go to sleep. Now, the duplicates don't have a bed, so they're unfortunately going to get a debuff. Uh, usually if they sleep on the floor a couple nights, they're going to wind up with a sore back debuff, which means that um, they won't move around as quickly. They'll be a little bit less efficient, but beds are not necessarily critical at the very beginning of the game. If you're working on trying to get to the point where you can stabilize your colony, one of the early things you can do is just try to focus on those key things that are important for their survival. A little less on the comfort, and then work on the comfort stuff afterwards. If you want to create a new schedule, you can do that in here, and you can set different time frames and put different duplicates on the different schedules. Um, this can be helpful if you have a lot of duplicates. Or if you have a duplicate who is a loud sleeper, you can put them on a separate sleeping schedule so you can manage their uh, their particular negative trait relatively easily. At the start of cycle two, and you can see they've already got the sore back trait. Um, if you look at that, it sees um, athletics minus one, so they're gonna run around a little a little more slowly. Uh, it's only gonna last for about half a cycle, so by the time half the day is gone, they'll be all right again. But eventually you're gonna want to bed so that they don't have that problem. Our duplicates are working on digging out over to the left-hand side over here so we can get underneath this pocket of water. I'm going to try and collect all the water in the bottom part of our colony. So I'm going to start off with a ladder. This is going to accomplish two purposes, ultimately. Uh, one is that we're going to have a way to get the water down to the to the, the bottom areas of the colony to get it out of my way. Uh, but two, we're also going to create a place for the CO2 to move to. Now, one of the common things I find with, with new players, they try to manage the CO2 a little bit too aggressively early on. They're worried about the, the, the carbon dioxide building up. But realistically, that shouldn't really be a problem at the start of your colony. You instead want to focus on uh, things like oxygen and food and what have you. If you just create a spot below your colony that's that's lower, CO2 will naturally sort itself downward in your colony. The gases all have their particular sort order. Oxygen will stay above carbon dioxide. Hydrogen will stay above oxygen and what have you. Uh, and so you don't really have to worry about cleaning the, the CO2 just yet. You can just let it fall towards the bottom of your colony out of your way. Bear in mind, as you expand and dig out, everywhere there was dirt that you dig out of a little tile is going to be a vacuum initially when the tile first breaks, and then the gases that are around it have to expand to fill in that spot. So the more you dig and expand in the area for your colony, the more uh, the more the gases are going to spread out and the less concentration you're going to have in those gases. 
In the stations tab, we have the research station, and this is going to be really, really useful to unlock new things that you can build, and it's kind of critical to the game, so we want to get that going early on. This does produce heat, so while I'm putting it uh, initially in the, the core part of my colony, later on you might want to move these to try to uh, conserve temperatures a little bit. I'm going to put a battery next to it as well, and then we're going to need more metals before I can build a manual generator, but we can get some of those as we dig down here. Uh, and that generator is certainly going to be useful, because we're going to need power to be able to do anything. Alright, Duplik has built a ladder down here, so let's crack open the water on this side of things. Uh, I have found in general that duplicates will tend to dig things before they'll build things. So they'll probably get to the digging skills first. Uh, we'll get them all this dug out. This will let the water release from here down in this lower area, and then we'll go up top and we'll drop this, uh, this water up here down as well. So we'll have a, a huge reservoir at the bottom, uh, and we can put our, our bottle, uh, or sorry, our pitcher pump in that as well to, uh, to collect more water. We have the copper we need, so I'm going to place a generator in here so a duplicate can run on that. And we'll connect all this up by wire. Uh, so what will happen is the duplicate will run on the treadmill, and that's going to generate more power than is needed for the research station. So some of that will store up in the battery. When that's filled up, the duplicate can run off and do another activity, while the, whoever's working on the research can still do the research. And so at this point, it's a good idea to start setting priorities based on your job skills. So in the priorities tab, you can see the different abilities that duplicates have. The things that are, that are a darker red are the things that they have more skill in. So... Han Solo, for example, is our, uh, our our researcher that we want to use predominantly for research. So I'm going to put him as a high priority for doing research tasks. Uh, it's a good idea to have things like uh, like life support as high for everybody as well. So they'll run around and do things that are necessary for life support. Uh, Toggling is another good one to set to high. And we can even set those abilities up here so that... We can even set the abilities up top here so that duplicates will all have that as a very high setting. So that way as they arrive in the colony, we won't have to worry about setting that all the time because they'll already have it. Power system's built and so is the research station, so let's get started on some research. Uh, the research tree is quite large in this game. There are a lot of different things to unlock. Uh, they are sorted by the, the different uh, type groupings, but if we zoom way out, you can see just how many of them there are. There's quite a few. Uh, initially, I would suggest focusing on food as a your priority. So this is going to give you access to algae terrariums if you want to use those for making oxygen later. Uh, the compost, which is useful for the outhouses and stuff. Um, I would f go up to the meal preparation phase, so that'll give you access to the electric grill, which you're not necessarily going to need early on, but um, the farm tile is really what we're going after, so that we can build a farm early on and get quick access to food. Our duplicate's going to need water in order to do that research, so we're going to go ahead and build ourselves the pitcher pump. Um, now, this extends out about, uh, I think it's about four tiles below. One, two, three, yeah. So four tiles below the pitcher pump is how far it can reach. Uh, I'm going to set this up a little bit above the water line because I'm planning to send more water down here. Uh, so we'll just set it up over here. Now that our pitcher pump is built, our duplicates can use it to retrieve bottled water. And they're going to take that up and use it to supply things like our wash basins. Uh, when we build a supercomputer, ultimately we're going to need water for that as well. Uh, though I think the other yeah, research station just requires dirt initially. I'm going to get the water we have collected up top here and move it down to the lower area. So I'm going to extend my ladder upwards. And we'll just dig into the, uh, the water supply that's up here. You do have to be a little bit careful sending your water to the lower part of your colony because if the duplicates have an accident, uh, it's probably going to wind up in your in your water supply. So that is something to, to sort of be aware of. Uh, initially, you may want to you may want to block this off once you get things all all set up so that they can't pee in the water. But uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much just now, as long as we give them a, a bathroom they can use. I think they should be all right. It's a good idea to set high priority on these. So if you click on the priority tab at the bottom, you can choose the different priority levels. I generally set cleaning the outhouses as a priority 9 to make sure they do that job, because if the, the uh, outhouses stop working, the duplicates will pee on your floor. Dragon Cycle 3 is when you're going to get access to your first duplicate from the printing pod. I'm going to choose blue, Blueprint here. Now, uh, the printing pod will give you an option of different duplicate types, or you can also get some other supplies. In this case, it's a snazzy suit, but it could be food or building supplies. Usually, you're going to have two or three duplicates, and then one or two of the other types of options. This set of duplicates is going to give us access to, to ranching, operating, ranching, or building. Uh, I'm going to lean towards uh, ranching and building, I think. Although this duplicate does have irritable bowels, so they're going to use the bathroom a little a little less quickly. But I tend to find things like anemics having a lower run speed uh, or the loud sleepers are a little bit more annoying for me to manage. Uh, it's not necessarily difficult, but just sort of a nuisance. And plus, this duplicate has two interests, so they're going to have two different uh, skill trees I can work through that are going to give them a, uh, a bonus to their morale. 
With the first duplicate you get from the printing pod, you actually have access to apply some skills. Now, the starting duplicates, they don't start without any, any, with any skill points. I think that's largely just to offset the fact you get to pick their skills at the very beginning uh, when you're choosing the, the duplicate type, or is you're getting more random selection for subsequent duplicates after that. So if we take Obi-Wan, we have two different trees that we can send him through some uh, some learning. So we can put him in Improved Construction, uh, which is will give him a morale boost, or uh, through the uh, if we get to the point of getting Ranching. I'm going to start off initially for this duplicate with uh, building the skill in Construction. Uh, so we'll add a point there. This duplicate currently has two morale, and you can see that they require only one, so we don't have to worry about their stress building up. Uh, duplicates initially will have two morale, so you don't have to worry about stress for the first early part of the game. As you get later in the game, you're adding more of these skills, and you can see that the morale requirements will go up. And if it gets to the point where the, mor the pink morale line is larger than the green, uh, the green line, that's when they start to build stress. Uh, we can build morale through other ways in the game by uh, giving them better food, building certain types of rooms, having positive decor environment, that sorts of thing. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about managing that. And certainly in the early part of the game, it's not something to be concerned with at all. Uh, I'm also going to give the duplicate a hat, although I think it's just for aesthetics. Every new duplicate you bring in will uh, will give a positive morale boost to the rest of the duplicates that are present there already. Uh, plus when they interact with each other, they can chit chat. That gives them a little morale boost too. All right, they're all getting a little wet, so unfortunately the sopping wet effect does give them a debuff. In this case, they're uh, they're getting an increased stress, but again, uh, stress is really not a problem, so it's no problem early on in the game. We finished our first research. They're all really happy about it. Let's go in and pick our next research item. So we've gotten up to the the meal preparation, so we can use uh, farm tiles, and that's going to be the next thing we want to focus on to make sure we have a consistent supply of food for our duplicates. Personally, I think once you've completed your first research and gotten the food, the other ones have just become a matter of uh, personal preference. I'm going to go down and select uh, Advanced Research as the next one for them to work on so we can get access to the supercomputer. Uh, that will let us do some of these uh, the, some of these other research items. Anything that has the, the second layer of research here, you can see requires the supercomputer for advanced research. So anything beyond level 2 on the tree is where we're going to need it. It will be helpful to get through the sanitation items as well. Uh, so we'll probably research that one next so we can build a, a proper bathroom. Um, but every every skill in here ultimately has some utility, so it just really comes down to personal preference, I think. Oxygen levels in the colony are pretty good. You can see the CO2 has sort of filtered its way downward. It's collecting towards the bottom of the colony. Uh, I'm going to dig down again. We'll put another ladder over here. We'll get a, a, a layer that's down below where we, we've been building already, uh, so we can start to expand down there. Uh, but my primary interest at this point is going to be in building farming, and I think the ideal place to do that will be over on the left-hand side here. It's a little bit warmer up top, so I don't want to build too high. It always gets warmer down low, but we can put a couple of rows of, uh, of farm tiles in here, and that will let our duplicates grow some food supply uh, so we don't have to worry about feeding them. We still have 20,000 kilocalories with the food, so at this point, it's really no rush, um, but it's not a bad idea to get this built early on so that your duplicates are ready to go. It's pretty important to watch what your duplicates are doing while they're building because they're not always the most intelligent. As you can see in this case, Chewie decided to climb down to the lower level while Obi-Wan was up top building the tiles. So we've got Chewie stuck inside here now and if we don't get him out he's going to wind up suffocating and dying. Fortunately that's an all too common occurrence. The more duplicates you get the harder it is to keep track of them. Uh, so it is really something to watch for. So we're going to raise the priority level on digging out the area that's to, the, to Chewie's right. So we can get Chewie out of this little bind he's got himself into. He's busy building tiles in there, even though he can't breathe. So, you know, priorities, buddy. Our duplicates have finished another level of research, so we're going to go in and add another one. It's important to keep these going. Uh, fortunately, the duplicate we selected has a plus seven in research, so he's actually researching things pretty quickly. Um, we have the ability to build the supercomputer now, but I don't need it just yet, so I'm not going to build it just yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move into sanitation. Now, uh, there are air systems in here, but we do have the ability to make an algae deoxidizer initially, and that's going to be probably the most important thing we can build soon. Or Sorry, it's oxygen diffuser now. They renamed it. Uh, this is going to consume 550 grams per second of algae. Uh, it's going to require 120 watts of power, and it's going to produce 500 grams per second of oxygen. I'm going to build that over here so we have good oxygen pressure near our, where we're farming, and it will also give us a good supply of oxygen for duplicates to breathe, which is kind of important. Uh, crops, when you're growing them, do require a certain amount of gas pressure, so it's important to ensure that you maintain that, otherwise they'll stifle. Uh, and you also want to watch out for temperatures as well. The oxygen produced by the oxygen diffuser is a little on the warm side. So if you mouse over here, you can see it's going to come out at 30 degrees Celsius, or it can be hotter if the materials that are being supplied into the machine are hotter. So if you have really hot algae you put in there, it can come out at higher temperatures. Uh, initially, that's not too big of a problem. The heat will sort of dissipate into the surrounding area. Over time, it will build up heat, though, and things will get warmer. And it could get hot enough that you will actually start to stifle your crops, so you want to watch that. 
Our good look at some more skill points, so we probably should spend some of those. Uh, Han Solo and Chewie both have skills, so we're going to spend their points first. Uh, now, Han Solo's on research, so we're going to give him this to give him a bonus to his, uh, his, his researching ability. Uh, we'll give him a little hat so I can spot who he is on the map or he's running around. Now, Chewie, we, we, we selected him because he had art skills as well as construction, but we don't really need to worry about boosting the art just yet because they don't have any of them locked through research. So I'm going to start off first by spending some points on improved construction for him. And we'll give uh, we'll give him a little fancy hat too. Looks like C3PO is the only one we're waiting on getting another skill point. We have a bunch of farm tiles available, so it's time to plant some seeds. We have 18 millwood seeds available, so we're gonna plant those in here. Now they have this handy copy settings button. If you haven't noticed it, you can click on that and paste the settings across all the, the same types of buildings, which is really helpful for things like farming where you're planting a lot of seeds. Research for the sanitation is finished, so we're going to move on and research something else. Uh, I think at this point I want to start to think about some decor items, because we're going to need to build a place for our duplicates to sleep. Uh, up until this point, we've kind of been very nice to them. They're sleeping on the floor. So we're going to go with artistic expressions as our first set of research uh, in, the, in the artistic space. We can build some little statues inside the room. Uh, I'm also going to set up our station for the supercomputer. We build that over here. That will let us uh, let us research some of those more advanced items. We are going to need more copper. We haven't really dug into a lot of it just yet, uh, but there is some down here they can get. As they dig out the copper here, they can build the supercomputer for us as well. It's late in cycle six, and the gate is active again, so we're going to go in and choose another duplicate. Uh, this will get us duplicate number five. Now, I'm probably going to stop at six to eight duplicates. I think if you're an early player, that's probably a good place to stop because you have enough duplicates to get some things done for you, but they're not necessarily going to take you know too much... Uh, uh, too much resource to manage, so you can be a little bit better that way. Uh, so, Stinky has uh, digging a plus seven. He's also got a triple trait option, which is nice. He's got two two beneficial traits and only one negative one. Um, pacifist is a trait that is not is a, listed as a negative, but not really one I find negative at all because it just means they won't attack things, and that's kind of fine. So we could take uh, we could take Ada with the plus seven machinery, Stinky with plus seven excavation, or we could take. Uh, uh, Ashcan here, who has uh, multiple skills as well. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the digging one, because digging is a very useful skill in the game. Uh, so we're going to take Stinky, and of course we're going to rename him. As your colony grows and you get more duplicates, and they have more skills and morale requirements go up, it uh, starts to become important to pay attention to the different types of rooms in the game you can build. Uh, if you click on the room overlay at the top right, you can see all the different types of rooms you can build and the effect that they have on the game. And we have a couple of outhouses here, but they're not currently in a room, so we're not getting any benefit from, from those, aside from the duplicates having a place to go to the bathroom. But if we look at here, we can see under latrine, if we built this into a room, because we have uh, we have toilets, we have wash stations in place, we can actually get a morale benefit of plus one for all the duplicates that use it. So we're going to go and build our first room there. Uh, we're going to use the pneumatic door on this side. And we'll put a pneumatic door on uh, on this side over here as well. And we just need to close this in to make an actual enclosed room. And now, once they've built the uh, the walls and the doors here, any duplicate that uses this bathroom will get a plus one morale benefit, which uh, will certainly be helpful over time. Now, our duplicates have more than one way to get into this bathroom, but we don't necessarily want them going out through this door because they won't be washing their hands. Uh, we, it's helpful to have them be able to go in through that door, but we probably want them going out the door on the left-hand side. If you click on the pneumatic door, you have the option to set uh, the passage that the duplicate can use through it. So, in this case... If I took off the arrow on this side, they could come in the door from outside the room, but they couldn't pass out through it. I'm going to leave it going both ways for the time being, because I want them to do some digging over here for me. Once they have that tackled, and, uh, and this is opened up, then I'll probably seal off this side over here, so they can't, uh, they can't keep going out that way. On to the next set of research. I think I'm going to grab the, the, uh, the power management as the next one, because that'll give us access to a larger battery, so our duplicate will have to run on the treadmill less often, and they can use those, uh, those abilities for, to do something else for us. We've been abusing our duplicates for a while, so I guess we should probably give them a place to sleep. Uh, I tend to like making my rooms four tiles high. You don't necessarily have to, but uh, that just seems to be my preference. It gives me room normally to build things and have some artwork and things above it if possible. Uh, so we're going to build their bedroom on the, sec the second level here above the, uh, above the printing pod. I generally like to build upwards for things like living space because oxygen rises. So there's a greater likelihood that as our colony expands, they'll be in, uh, in a pocket of oxygen. We'll get all this dug out. Uh, now, we are going to need to build a, a roof in here in order to enclose this and make it a proper room for the duplicates. So, we do need to get high enough to be able to do that. Uh, but we'll put a, a roof in here. Got to give them enough space to get up top there. Otherwise, they won't be able to dig, dig in here to build this. Uh, 
Now, in order for them to get a benefit from the room type, again, if we go in here, we look at bar the, the barracks, we just need a, at least one bed, no industrial machinery, and the room can be 12 tiles to, to 64 tiles, and that'll give them a plus one morale benefit as well. So we're going to again put a pneumatic door on the edge here. And then when we place our, our beds in here, with the cots, I'm going to leave enough space for us to have uh, a statue in between each of them. Now I'm going to assume we're going to stop around six duplicates, so we're going to build six beds initially. I'm going to place a pneumatic door on this side as well, so we can we can open up access on both sides of the bedroom, so they can access it from either end. Uh, I will ultimately move this battery that's here. I think we've uh, completed more research, so let's actually see if we have... Yeah, we have the large battery available to us now. Pretty much anything in the game that consumes, produces, or stores electricity is going to generate heat. Uh, we want to try to keep that out of the core part of the colony if we can. So I'm going to take the jumbo battery. We'll put that over here. We'll run a wire. This is going to use a little bit of extra copper in order to do it. Uh, but I would like to, to free up space in the central part of my colony anyway. And this will also get the heat out of the main area. The power research we started is finished, so we can now move on again to do another set of research. Um, I'm going to go into pressure management so we can get access to airflow tiles. Airflow tiles are really handy to build into the floor spots um, so that you can have things like uh, allowing more spaces for the CO2 to filter downwards, more room for the oxygen to expand upwards, and that just helps generally with, uh, with gas movement and gas management in the colony. That's also really helpful, I find, above doorways. Now, I could actually build, instead of using tiles here, we could put a second door on top. And we have a suffocating duplicate who's trapped himself. Darth Vader, no! We need a duplicate rescue already. Party 9, get in here, dig this out. We gotta get Darth Vader free. There you go, buddy. Again, you really need to watch what your duplicates are doing. If you set them on build jobs, it's, it seems to be uh, all too common where they'll just trap themselves. Our duplicates have built a larger battery outside of the colony, so I'll destroy the small one here. And I'm going to put a ladder in this place instead. Uh, we'll just build that straight up here. We're going to dig all of this out. And I'm going to plan to put a dining space in over on the right-hand side. Uh, you can get a really nice morale boost out of having your duplicates have a good place to go to, to, uh, to eat their dinner. So we're going to take care of that. Um, now this room is actually going to be really big. It's actually big enough to be able to do as a great room, but... Um, we have a, a relatively small number of duplicates, so it's actually just going to be kind of like a lot of dead space initially. But this will also give us direct access to the algae that's over here, so that's all right, too. We have some more skills we can spend, so we'll go here and see what kind of skill points we have available. So we have one for Darth Vader. Now, we actually uh, brought him with the intention to work on digging, and I forgot to spend the skill point when he first arrived. So we'll give him hard digging, so he'll have the ability to dig into some of the stuff that we didn't have the ability to dig into before. Uh, for example, over here, these ones that have the one diamond actually require that first level of digging ability. Uh, and now we have access to that. And that's also going to give us another large pocket of algae here. So with the algae we have access to, uh, we should have a good supply of oxygen in this colony for quite a while. The amount of research we've already completed, we're kind of down to that point where we have uh, the selection of just sort of building, uh, taking care of whatever research we want to. Uh, I think I'm going to move towards the insulated tiles over here so that we can try to insulate the space. Uh, if you look at the temperature overlay on this particular colony, you can see there's a little warmer spot up here. Uh, I'd kind of like to keep some of that heat from encroaching into the colony a little bit, so having the ability to insulate against it would be good. Uh, not all of the uh, the asteroids have uh, separating areas that are filled in with abyssalite anymore that provides a great insulation, so you know we might want to try to block some of that off ourselves. Late in cycle nine, now we can bring in another duplicate. This will be duplicate number six. Uh, that will fill up all the beds we have space for. Now we could bring in oxalite, but oxygen is not really much of a challenge for me right now. So I think I'm going to focus on bringing in another duplicate. Uh, divers lungs is a really great trait to have in a duplicate because they it lets them consume less air. So that's probably not a bad one. This duplicate brings with them uh, animal husbandry and cuisine, uh, or we go with digging, suit wearing and cooking, farmer doctoring and digging. So I think I'm going to go with uh, with animal husbandry and cuisine because that can't hurt, and we'll bring a du this duplicate in. The duplicates have finally gotten finished with their bedroom space. I added some additional airflow tiles to help with oxygen, and as you can see, it's pretty well oxygenated in here. Now that we have these airflow tiles, the CO2 can drop out of the room as well when the duplicates are sleeping in there. And although we're building up CO2 here, I'm going to put some more airflow tiles in, and we'll finish digging this out so we can let that CO2 drop down as well. Uh, the oxygen will be able to shift upwards, and then everything will be in a good position from an oxygen perspective there. But our duplicates could probably use a little bit of nice decor in their room to try to make things a little bit better for them. So we're going to put in some statues, and we're going to make those out of granite if we have access to it. There we go, because those give plus 20% decor. So we're going to stagger in some statues here and here in between all the beds. Now, probably the biggest negative decor impact right now is all the junk that's sitting on the ground. 
So we're going to want to do a little bit of cleanup on those as well. Uh, we're also going to put some hanging plants above the beds. We don't have the ability to make pictures just yet, uh, but we can do that. We can also put in corner molding. Uh, we'll make those out of granite as well. Oops. There we go. So once the, du the duplicates get that taken care of, things will be a little nicer in there. And down below here, I'm going to start to build out some storage bins uh, that we can fill up with uh, with resources and things that are on the floor so that uh, it'll get a little bit nicer. If we look at the decor overlay, you can see it's not really the nicest place for them to live in. Right now they have no stress and germs and everything are fine, so we're not really worried about it from a morale perspective yet. But as we start to increase their skill levels, uh, they are going to want some better morale and decor is a nice way to add to that. In the top room we opened up over here, we're going to build in some seating for our duplicates to have dinner. Uh, so we do need to have some mess tables in here. We have six duplicates. I'm going to put in a total of eight tables. Uh, assuming this colony is going to take two additional. Uh, we'll also need a water cooler in here in order to de designate this space. And we're going to need some decor in here as well in order to make this uh, a nice place for the duplicates to hang out. So we'll put in some, uh, some crown molding. Uh, we'll do some hanging pots in here as well. Uh, and then we can also put in a couple of statues. I, now, in order for this to be classified as the right kind of room, I think we actually have to get a, a plus 20 decor. But hopefully that will get all of that covered. In order to protect our water supply, I moved the, uh, the pitcher pump over just a little bit so we can do this little cup-shaped um, flooring underneath the ladder. And then I've destroyed this ladder section of ladder here. We'll fill in that with floor so that if for some reason there is an accident above and polluted water spills down here, it should catch in this little basin here instead of going directly down into our clean water supply. So we can try to protect that from any germs that might come down the ladder. We have a bit of a mess building up in the bathroom, and the, the polluted water that comes out of the wash basins needs to be dumped, and we also have some polluted dirt on the ground. Uh, now, we do have access to the compost, which I should have set up a little bit earlier, so in refinement, we'll grab the compost and we'll set up a couple of those out here. I'm going to keep those outside of the main area of the colony, because the dirt they produce when they break down the polluted dirt is actually really high temperatures. So again, we'll try to keep those temperatures isolated more towards the perimeter, where it's already kind of warm, set them in the core of the base. Now, for the polluted water, we're going to need a bottle emptier. And there's a convenient location down here where we can dump it right into the space that already has some polluted germs in it. So I'm going to build a ladder down to this lower area. And we're going to make a simple airlock in here that will actually uh, allow the CO2 to stop the polluted oxygen from building back up into our base. Um, now I do have a video out on uh, different airlocks as well. You can check those out if you want to see exactly how this works and why. But basically it's going to allow a little pocket of CO2 to get trapped right in here. And then we won't have to worry about... Um, about any of that polluted oxygen coming back up to our base. In here, we're going to put our bottle emptier. And then our duplicates can take the bottles of polluted water down here and they can dump them right into this polluted water that's already here. And then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Our duplicates are starting to earn some additional points now. So we're going to start spending some of those. Uh, we have Han Solo can get up to field research now. And you can see his morale is going to be sufficient to cover that without any added stress. Uh, Chewy, I was putting him initially in improved construction, but I want to get him starting on the art fundamentals, so I have to wait for him to get a, a few more points of experience so that we can start him on art, because we do need an artist in order to carve the statues to provide a bit of a decor benefit for our duplicates. Duplicates finally got around to building our storage bin, so I have a sweeping job set up for them, just at priority 5, for them to pick, do some general cleanup when they're not super busy with other things. Uh, the storage bins themselves, I set them up to store everything except for critter eggs, and then the organic, I deselected polluted dirt as well, because I want that polluted dirt to go into the compost uh, that we built outside the colony, not into the storage bins. Looking at the room overlay, I actually built the, the sleeping area a little bit too large. So we have all six beds in the one room, and that's giving us a room that styles at 76 tiles. But in order for it to be a barracks, it can only be 64 tiles. So we're going to solve that by deconstructing one of the statues that's in here. We'll just divide the room with a door. That'll make two smaller rooms, and both of those will qualify as being a barracks. And then we'll have a nice sleeping quarters for our duplicates. Alright, a little room has been built down here for our uh, our bottle emptier, so I'm going to set this now to dump out our polluted water. Uh, I'm going to set this actually to priority 7, so they, they empty it rel relatively regularly. We also have some slime that's actually sitting just inside this airlock, which I do not want. So we're going to build a storage bin in here. Uh, we're going to set this at a priority 8, because I want them to build it quickly before we get too much uh, polluted oxygen built up in here. I'm going to set this to store the slime, and then they'll just stick it in there. You can also put a storage bin underneath the water. That'll stop the slime from off-gassing this way uh, with polluted oxygen. But for the meantime, I'm just going to keep it stored outside my colony so it just doesn't present any problems. Cycle 15 is ending. We have another option in the blueprint coming in. Uh, we have curative tablets. 
Oxalite we can pick, or more duplicates. I'm going to pass the duplicates for now and stay at six, although uh, realistically this colony could support more. We have plenty of food, plenty of oxygen, but I don't want to build more bedrooms for them yet. So we're going to go with a care package item and take the curative tablets. Actually, you know what? We'll take the oxalite. There's no harm in having extra oxygen, so we're going to print the oxalite. We'll let that go in. Now, our oxygen level is actually really good in this colony. And we're running off of only a single oxygen diffuser. So you can see the whole main level where the duplicates are living is already really well oxygenated. Uh, we have a great food supply. In general, for mealwood, it takes about five mealwood plants per duplicate in order to support them based on the, the rate at which they grow and how many kill calories they produce. We have six duplicates, so we need 30 plants. I currently have about 45 of them planted here. So we're in really good shape that way and our food supply is growing. The rooms we've already met and set up, so we have two barracks providing a plus one morale bonus to our duplicates. The uh, the dining area, I actually built the great hall. I skipped right over top of the mess hall, which would have just been a smaller sized room. Um, but I went straight to the great hall, so we have a, a plus six morale bonus from that. And we're getting plus one morale from the latrine, so they're already getting a plus eight morale bonus just on the three different rooms they're dragged with here, never mind decor and food and what have you as well. So they're doing really well. Just completed research for ranching, and I wanted that specifically for access to the grooming station and the critter feeder, because we're going to try and take care of the shine bugs that are in the colony. We'll keep them alive so we have them for the later part of the game. If we don't feed them early on, they have a tendency to die off, and then you don't have shine bugs anymore in your colony. So even if you wanted to use them later for something like, say, using powering a solar panel, they wouldn't be around to use. So we're going to try and take care of them early on. Uh, we've already unlocked a number of different items in research that I, I went through. At this point, again, it's, it's mostly personal preference in terms of what you unlock. Uh, but I've already gotten into things like uh, we're going to finish off researching improved ventilation. So we have insulated gas pipes, uh, atmos sensors, and what have you. All those things will be useful for later on when you're building more complex systems in your colony. But right now, we're just getting a solid, stable setup initially. So there's not really anything complex we need to build. It's the start of cycle 20, and we have a very stable colony now. I've actually spent the last couple of cycles largely just focused on trying to sweep up the floor, but there's so much material they dug out that it's taking them a really long time to clean it up. But as you can see, we have more food than the duplicates can eat. This is going up constantly over time. Uh, we're at 56,847 kilocalories now. Each duplicate eats about 1,000 kilocalories per day. Yes, yeah, so we have almost 20 cycles worth of food already stored up. The food is sitting in the ration box right now, which is not refrigerated. Uh, as we move forward, it would be a good idea to, to either put those into refrigerated units so that uh, the food doesn't spoil, or similarly, you can place them down into areas that are filled with things like CO2 so that um, they don't spoil as well because they won't be exposed to oxygen. Now, as you can see, the colony is really well oxygenated. We have plenty of air for all of our duplicates to breathe. Uh, the CO2 is starting to build up. We have almost a kilogram of it down below here. So we have a couple of options as we move forward. You can either dig up more space below here, to allow more room for the CO2 to expand down below, and then we don't have to worry about cleaning it up just yet. Or we can look at moving forward into other things, like you could potentially use algae terrarium. I tend not to use them personally myself, because I, I tend to prefer the oxygen diffuser or other methods of generating oxygen, but that's an option. Uh, you can use the carbon skimmer, which you can set up down here just to clean CO2 out of the air. But the colony is really positioned now for some good growth. I've also set up a grooming station and a very small ranch down here. If we check the rooms overlay, you can see this is a stable in the lower area here. Uh, the intention with this is just going to be that uh, we're going to free the shine bugs that are down here. And we'll have, uh, once we have the skill to actually give somebody the, uh, the ranching skill, then we'll let them groom the shine bugs. They'll become domesticated, they'll lay eggs, continue to populate so you can have shine bugs continuing on the later part of your game. If you don't take care of them early on, they have a tendency not to stay around. Uh, so it would be nice to be able to take care of those and make sure we have a good population. But from this point on, there's a lot of ways you can go and build out your colony. Uh, you can set up some plumbed-in bathrooms so that you have, uh, again, another boost to your morale there, as well as a little bit less work for your duplicates in working through that. You can set up some different oxygen generation systems, build other ranches, other crops that you can grow. But from this place here, you're in a very stable position. You don't have to worry about your colony crashing and burning at all because they're uh, they're going to do really well. And you can use this as a platform to launch ahead later into the game. Now, there are definitely many ways to play this game. This is There's not one right approach. This is the way I tend to approach it. And it's worked really well for me. And I hope it also works well for you. Thanks again for checking out the tutorial. I hope this helps you build a good, strong colony in your own game of Oxygen Unincluded. I'm, as always, Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.